Hello and welcome to another video of our virtual thread deep dive session. In this video, I will talk about graphic performance improvements and GPU ray tracing. We call this topic RTX, but actually all the features I will present do work on a Maxwell or Pascal generation, a GB100 or an RTX card. With Fred 2019.3, we have introduced GPU denoising, which uses NVIDIA's GPU accelerated AI technology to dramatically reduce the time to render an image that is noiseless and provides fast interactive feedback for artists. The denoiser can be enabled in the render settings. The real-time quality of the denoising can be influenced by changing the real-time anti-aliasing settings. The denoising is a post-process. As more samples are applied to the initial render and as better the quality for the input image is, as better the results are with real-time denoising. This feature requires an NVIDIA GPU of Maxwell or Pascal generation, NVIDIA GV100 or RTX. Due to the fact that GV100 is especially made for AI operation, this card performs best for denoising. You can use GPU denoising in combination with CPU ray tracing and therefore on top of your cluster if the master has one of the mentioned cards. Let's have a look at Fred and see what options we have for our AI denoiser. I'm using GPU ray tracing due to the fact I have two RTX 6000 cards in my computer. This scene is all real time, but as you can see, the image quality is quite noisy. Our AI denoiser can be found in the render settings module in the anti-aliasing tab. In here we have added two new options for the AI denoiser. Deep learning still frame is only applied when you hit the anti-aliasing button and the image stands still. Deep learning always is always applied to the image. As you can see, the quality is much better now, but still a little bit blurry. This can be changed by adding more samples to the initial frame using the real-time anti-aliasing and medium, for example. Now the AI denoiser has a much better input image and can give a better output. Let's talk about variable ray shading and foveated rendering next. With Fred 2020.2, you can use the HTC Vive Pro i headset with eye track foveated rendering using NVIDIA's variable ray shading and OpenGL. Foveated rendering can improve performance in scenes that use compute intense materials as well as when using real-time anti-aliasing. It increases rendering performance and quality by applying varying amounts of processing power to different areas of the image. VRS works by varying the number of pixels processed by a single pixel shader operation. And what does foveated rendering mean exactly? The gaze direction of the Vive Pro I user is tracked. The current focused area of the image is rendered with a higher shading quality from the periphery. Depending on the quality settings, which can be changed in the preferences, this can speed up rendering and or increase visual quality. If you don't have a Vive Pro I, you can still enable the foveated rendering option for VR. The foveal region then remains in the center of the image. Keep in mind, a NVIDIA graphic card with Turing architecture supporting the OpenGL shading rate image extension is required, and therefore all RTX cards. With Fred 2021, it is now possible to use variable ray shading also in desktop mode. As an extension to the real-time anti-aliasing, VRS can be activated in the main menu. The VRS quality is connected to the real-time anti-aliasing settings and can be adjusted in the preferences. For materials with small patterns that usually cause issues and moray effects, like carbon fiber, it is possible to override the variable ray shading quality per material in the Material Editor common tab. Let me show you the effect of variable ray shading in FRED. I have a small scene with a carbon fiber materials on the hood. Depending on the angle and the distance, the moray effect of the carbon fiber material is quite obvious. Cranking up my real-time anti-aliasing does not really have an effect on the material. But in addition, I can apply variable ray shading. Screen and materials will have an effect on my whole scene. The quality is much better. The quality of the variable ray shading can be set in the preferences. In the render options tab, real-time anti-aliasing, you can see how much samples for variable ray shading are applied for the different real-time anti-aliasing settings. 
It is also possible to set the variable rate shading for individual materials. For each material, we have in the comment tab the possibility to change the samples per material. Setting this to 8 samples will also mean I have to change my real-time anti-aliasing to high, as this is the value I have set in my preferences. FRED 2021 brings customers the power of GPU ray tracing and therefore maximum flexibility for hardware choices. From within the FRED user interface, users can easily switch between OpenGL, CPU or GPU ray tracing using the drop-down menu in the main menu bar. FRED GPU ray tracing works on NVIDIA GPUs of Turing, Volta, Pascal and Maxwell architecture. RTX GPUs are highly recommended and multiple GPUs will obviously improve performance. For optimal performance with two GPUs, enabling SLI and using an NVLink bridge is highly recommended. One Thread Pro license supports two GPUs in your workstation, but keep in mind that only homogeneous GPU setups are supported. As of today, not all features that work in CPU ray tracing are yet supported on the GPU and something we will improve over time. We will have a separate talk from our technical sales guys Simon Nagel and Danny Turney on the GPU ray tracing topic, as these guys have made a lot of experience over the last year, especially when it comes to RTX clusters. That's it for our graphic performance improvements and GPU ray tracing. Hope to see you in one of the next videos.